What is up? What's your why, listeners? We have another episode of the podcast here this week with Caesar Flores. This goes along the lines of the athleticism series that I've been doing now, and he's an Olympic weightlifter. Um, and what we kind of talked through today is his journey into the sport, um, kind of how he has overcome his injury over the last few years, and then um, specifically, more or less, the one that happened last December. And so talking through that was very kind of inspiring to see how he's able to be vulnerable, but also talk through um, how he's really feeling about the whole injury and the, the coming back from being not able to hit the max lifts that he's used to, but still putting the work day in and day out to get the job done and to grow and heal. Other things we talked about were his YouTube channel, where he's the trash alley therapist. Uh, he likes to break stuff in the alley and talk about real things. But that's kind of where I found him. Uh, very interesting guy to follow. A very cool person to follow. Um, but definitely check out his YouTube. Check out his page. But first of all, check out the podcast here. I appreciate you guys listening. And come back for more next week. Thank you. Huh. Yeah, man. Thank you. I appreciate you asking me. <laughs> absolutely I was, it was it's i was like why does why does he want to talk to me well you know i just like talking to people and i don't know i kind of i like the long-form conversation i've been following you for a while yeah um uh, just looking at you as like a kind of an only lifter and um jealous of how much you can lift but also <laughs> like i think it's pretty damn cool um but uh i guess we can just start by Tell us your name. Where are you from? Well, uh, my name is uh, Cesar Flores. I am from Southern California. I originally I was I was uh, I grew up in like North County, San Diego, and then I eventually moved to uh, Inland Empire, and then more recently I I live in uh, Orange County, where I I train out of uh, SoCal weightlifting. Okay. Yeah. So you've lived uh, like in California, Southern area. Yeah, whole my, my whole life. Okay. Yeah. Right on. It would, yeah. It'd be or, pretty hard to leave that area. I feel like if you grew yeah, up. Yeah, it's I it's it's I luckily like I grew up in pretty pretty decent area at least um uh at least the second half where I was like up in uh, Riverside County and I um mm -hmm. and I uh you know that's where that's where I got real serious about about sports and like football in particular which mm -hmm. you know kind of kind of burned me where now I don't really like watching football I've always I've always been a baseball kid mm -hmm. like I've always watched baseball but um but yeah like growing up there that's where you kind of I kind of got like a, a real perspective shift on what the next level is or where I'm trying to get to with mm -hmm. um <clears throat> with like school and college and just that kind of stuff that my dad was like really pushing. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, after like, after, you know, sports and, and football didn't really pan out. There was a, a little bit of time with uh, trying to figure out where I wanted to go and what we mm -hmm. wanted to do. And then <clears throat> that's where I kind of found weightlifting and eventually found my way up here to beautiful orange County. That's Los Angeles, right? Or is that still San Diego? It's like, it's about an hour and a half. It's like an hour and a half, probably like two hour drive with like traffic south fish. And I'm terrible at directions, but it's, it's not quite Los Angeles. It's like the surrounding area of Los oh, okay. Angeles. Gotcha. I've never been to that part of California before, so I'd have no idea. Where are you from? I'm, I'm from North Dakota. Okay, so, cool. Uh, Hence the hat. I was just outside with the dogs and um, before I was putting together that futon and it's it feels like 10 degrees outside today. So pretty exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for there to be a legitimate reason to wear my beanie. There's no legitimate <laughs> reason to wear it now aside from just, that's just what I wear when I train most days, but I like, I want it to be cold so I can wear it and it be real. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I love wearing a beanie just to control my hair. You yeah. Know, having long hair, ha always having a hat is pretty nice. Yeah. 
I feel you. Right, I'm I'm right here. I haven't <laughs> yeah, exactly. I haven't cut my hair. I haven't cut my hair in like three or four years. How 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 long is it? Like down to your? It has to it's be like it's probably it. like well because I have like really really curly hair. Okay. It's probably like down to like my middle upper back. Like mm-hmm. it covers my like it covers my my traps. Yeah. But if you were to like take it and pull it and straighten it, you can get it down to like almost like almost my upper mid back. It's pretty yeah. like yeah. Yeah. I was there for my sister's wedding last year. I was her maid of honor and I okay. had some nice flowing hair that day. They All straightened right. it out and everything. It was it was wild. But yeah. um so kind of going back to like your high school days uh did you start lifting back then like olympic lifting and or how were you kind of in, uh so, first started in the sports world yeah so with uh obviously with like playing football you're exposed to the weight room mm-hmm. so <clears throat> anybody who's anybody uh in that field of of sports who has gone from high school sports to like training specifically for olympic weightlifting i mean you don't really have to like it's really you could just kind of perceive it as well but mm-hmm. the difference in technique and overall skill that kind of resides in a weight room unless they like prioritize it it's it's super bad like the technique mm-hmm. and all that stuff is like super super bad so you know <clears throat> there i am there I am with my couple of friends and where, you know, we're lifted, we're like power cleaning and power snatching and, you know, back to, you're just, you're just getting after it. You're just getting after yeah. it. You're lifting heavy and you're like, you don't really care. Um, but that's kind of how we started. We were just, you know, training, uh, what we'd have a PE. So we'd have, yeah, we'd have like a, a PE, a football PE three times, two to three times a week. And then during summer, obviously you have like your summer camp. And then when was it? Like obviously you had like regular season training just to stay in shape, but it wasn't as intense, but it was like summer and everything leading up to season. That's when things were like super, super intense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously like off season, like right in December, if you didn't go to like playoffs and stuff. So you're, you're training like year round for it, but that's where I first got exposed to it. And <clears throat> I had always, you know, I just kind of always had a, I guess, yeah, like a predisposition to be strong. Um, mm-hmm. When I was, when I was in, I think when I was a junior, I broke the squat record at my high school. Um, excuse me. I broke the squat record at my high school. Uh, it was a 515 pound back squat. So uh, Dang. I remember the first, the first time I attempted that when I, when I when I on my way back up, I had my right hand slipped off <laughs> and landed on the rack. The bar was falling off, and my coach was like, "Dump it!" And I was like, and I stood it up, and I, I was like, I "Was like, does that count? Does that count?" I'm like my hand was off, but does it count? Yeah, everyone was freaking out. But that's awesome. That's how that's how it starts. <laughs> that's how it typically started, mm-hmm. and then it was just you know power cleans and power snatches was just something that. I was just kind of just kind of good at. I wasn't mm-hmm. like not great, but it was just something that was fun. I enjoyed doing that. So then after high school, when there was no like athletic prospects that like panned out or anything, mm-hmm. um, me and my me and my couple of friends had uh like for lack of a better word, all of us like really didn't make it to to the next level as far as athletics. And we all kind of just sat and got fat after high school. And we were just, what do we do? Uh, what do we do? What do we want to do? So we started, mm-hmm. we started doing CrossFit again, or we just started doing CrossFit for the first time, Yeah, um, which led to doing the Olympic lifts again in some of those wads. I, it, we watched the, we watched the fittest on earth movie. Did you ever see that one? The, the first yeah, one, I'm a, like I'm Matt a CrossFit Fraser guy as well, and, yeah, right? and Ben Big Smith. Fan. Yeah. 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 So that was the first one that we watched and we were like, how do we get to be that sexy? <laughs> so we were like, we started doing CrossFit, but we didn't even go to a box. We were just like doing it in our local, like you fit gym where you couldn't even like drop weights and nothing. Mm-hmm. We were just three goons in the back, just 
running around around all these like middle aged women just on the treadmills. And then we're eventually like, eventually there was a there was a gym. There was like a a gold gym that had like the like the like the five dollar membership. Mm-hmm. Like the sign up fee was like a five dollar membership, but then they get you on like the eighty dollar sign up fee. So we signed up for that, and it was like okay, like five ten bucks a month. But they had this like big rec room in the back, and uh, or just like a big where they had like a basketball court. And like they had like two or three like two platforms with wood plates or with uh wood platforms with bumper plates, and um, you're like oh we could do some we could do some actual like bigger wads here, and then mm-hmm. that turned into that turned into and like just for reference like my my I was an offensive lineman and my uh-huh. my two my two other friends one was a kicker. And the other one was also an offensive lineman, but significantly smaller than me. Mm-hmm. And he had been he had been training, like he had basically been training and like playing up until up until school ended. So he was in better shape. My kicker, my kicker friend, who's my best friend, he a uh, soccer player. So after after football ended, he just went into soccer. And mm-hmm. then I got hurt that last year for the final time. And I was just like, I was done. So I'm coming into weightlift. I'm coming in like CrossFit weightlifting, uh, at like 300, like 310 pounds, mm-hmm. but just, just like not a good 310 pounds. I was like, very, just like very out of shape. And just, I was like, uh, I, you thought I was an athlete, but I wasn't. So running around doing these wads, that was, that was not fun. But then, but then, like doing all the stationary weightlifting stuff, I was like, "Oh, I might be good at this." Mm-hmm. So eventually, that turned into like, "Okay, I'm, I'm gonna not do CrossFit. I'm just gonna do weightlifting." Mm-hmm. It's kind of so like just what happens when you uh, started doing like the Oli again and um, started getting into it. Were you? Did you have the mobility and the flexibility to like get into full squat snatches and? all that right I, away i definitely like I, I so the i was a when i played baseball i played baseball from the time i was ba- like six all the way up to 14 but when i went to the high school like went mm-hmm. to high school so um my primary position was a catcher mm. so i was so obviously like for you know multiple games tournaments because I, I played travel ball i was just playing you know normal ball i was just playing like year round I was in a bottom position for an extended period of time. So I'm super comfortable down there. I'm like super comfortable in a squat. So by the time, you know, it, it definitely helped because that was just kind of a, a learned movement pattern and just mm-hmm. comfortable down there. So, and then when I started trading for football and stuff, I'm in mean, offensive line, I'm in a three point stance, all this kind of stuff. So being in that low to the ground bottom position is definitely just something that I've super comfortable in mm-hmm. um there's there's you there's a uh, there's a couple there's a couple videos out there uh i think one of them i think both of them were actually i was like at a some national meet but the one the national meet where i was in overland park kansas like i cleaned 182 and i like did not drive it as well i back then like my technique is significantly better now back mm-hmm. then i was just kind of dummy strong um so i like pulled under it and i like got crashed it crashed on me and pulled me forward and both of my feet come up i'm like on my toes i'm like on my toes with 400 pounds on my chest just like just like trying to get it and then as soon as my heels touch i'm like okay i'm good and i stand up but that's where that's where like years of balancing and that kind of stuff yeah. just, just comes in handy. That's just like an unfair advantage. Yeah. Well, that's, it's, it's, uh, I think it's crazy to see where people come from uh, when they come into either a CrossFit or Oli and yeah. how their background helps them because you get like, I have, I coach, I coach CrossFit like three or four yeah. days a week. And I have one guy, a formal, a former linebacker for, uh, North Dakota state here. And he's got like no mobility, all 
his his lists are exactly what you would expect them to be from a football player doing only yeah. movements. Now, the ones who shock me are the the only lifters that are throwers for yeah. those guys are monsters. Yeah. Uh uh so like it's pretty it's at our at, at SoCal, at SoCal weightlifting, um our one of our coaches there, uh Cody, he's like he was like the first ever member to join and he has stayed through their entire, you know, the entire idea of what SoCal has been. Mm -hmm. Um, but Cody is a a throwing coach out at Mount Sac and he, him and I have talked about it. He shows me all the time. Uh, but he shows me like just these ridiculously strong, powerful lifters that Mm -hmm. are throwers primarily. And they're, and he's always like, just like, doesn't it just make, doesn't doesn't it just hurt that there's people out here who could do this? It's not even their sport. And I was like, yeah, Cody, it does. But wow. at, at our at our at our at SoCal, like at our facility, there's a there's a throwing ring. Like there's a, a ring. So there there are throwers coming in here. Okay. There, like there are throwers coming in throwing because he coaches it out of mm-hmm. out of SoCal. And there's throwers coming in and some of them um you know you can definitely tell like some of them are new to throwing, some of them have been in it. But every now and then you'll get some like you'll get some some like big time lift like big time throwers that come in just to mm-hmm like just to hang out and throw and some of those guys some guys are monsters just monstrous athletes mm-hmm. like one of my one of my buddies one of my buddies um nick ponzio he's uh out of the out of uh i he i threw against him when i was in high school mm-hmm. and he demolished me obviously but like he's he went to he went to the olympics he's like he's european like he's very he's a very good thrower and watching his like his training videos i saw him like pull like eight nine hundred pounds off the ground i saw him squat a bunch i was like this dude is wild this dude's crazy but sometimes i wonder if like nfl players or it's i kind of look at the nfl as for like men to be like the goal sport to get into at least from where i'm from and if some of those guys trained only or trained even like CrossFit, how much better things would be. Yeah. And... I, th- and I think that's like a common, I guess a common discussion. I think, I think the reason why a lot of the talent that you get from that you get in weightlifting are, you know, some of them are born and bred weightlifters, mm-hmm. but then you have some freak athletes who come out, who just trickle out of football like and, and stuff like that because obviously weightlifting isn't uh weightlifting isn't like a very profitable sport to do mm-hmm. kind of like most olympic level like olympic yeah. sports unless you get to like the very very top mm-hmm. there are support like there there are support systems and stuff that allow you to get through but there's nothing like there's nothing like coming out of college to uh few you know like a few million dollar signing bonus you know again that's Mm -hmm. for the very select few that get to do that but the money the money is what attracts these insane level athletes whether like whether it's football or baseball or any any sport Mm -hmm. on both men and women's side like it's i'm sure that there's i'm sure that there's like if if weightlifting was paid attention to a little bit more and it's definitely gotten better but if it's paid attention to a little bit more and they had like and they had the pool or the 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 government support like some of these other countries i'm sure you'd get a lot more talent but Mm -hmm. someone like someone like west kitts who comes from you know he's a collegiate level athlete like a collegiate level football player running back uh super powerful dude like strong as like strong strong you know came from that background went over to Cal strength and obviously the rest is history. Like he went to the Olympics, mm-hmm. you know, that's where it's like, where are these guys at? Oh, well, there's this other, there's this new, um, there's this, a new super on the block. His name is Aaron Williams. He, uh, he, I, I was talking to him, um, out of a pretty, you know, Nebraska. It's a Nebraska football player. Like, didn't didn't make it to the league, but 
I think I was out of nowhere, just out of nowhere, dude comes out, snatches 170. And everyone's like, yo, what? Who is this guy? What? And I ran into him when we were at uh, at uh, Nationals in Vegas. I was just talking to him. I was just talking to him about some stuff. And he was talking about like what his best back squat is. And he was telling me it was just a little over 700 pounds. It's like, okay, that's pretty standard for a super. I would hope. I hope mm-hmm. if you're trying to clean and jerk 230 plus, like it's, yeah, you definitely need like a 700 pound mid 700 back squat. Uh, but he's telling me his bench is like well over 400. You know, I'm like, that's, I can't bench that. And like his pull is somewhere similar to like his back, like his back squat, probably off mm-hmm. by like 50 or 80 pounds, something like that. It's just like the ratio. I didn't, I, but it's, it's like, dude's what is he? he's like six probably like six four six five he's just a big strong guy and it's mm-hmm. like how many of those guys if they came over to weightlifting uh like what could they accomplish because mm-hmm. because the crazy thing is the crazy thing about aaron is that he's he's incredibly strong and he's made he's made tremendous strides in his technique but like the like going back and looking at his Instagram, you like and some of those lifts, you could tell mm-hmm. like the technique that he was that he had was very rudimentary, like just very rough. And in the last few months, the dude has just been hammering technique. And it's like it's getting to the point where it's like like it's meeting up. And that's where that's where it's like, man, if you put like if he if take his his natural talent. And then put him in a situation where he spends the same amount of time that he spent on on football with mm-hmm. weightlifting. Like, what can he do? That's what yeah. that's what's crazy is that for a lot of, I mean, for a lot of like West kids, like I think he started weightlifting. Obviously, he probably had exposure to weightlifting before, mm-hmm. but he he started like seriously weightlifting. I think he was, I think he might have been later. He's like twenty twenty six, twenty seven. Okay, so you know kind of going back on what i said where it's like imagine taking the time to develop as an athlete from that early Mm -hmm. from from the time you start playing like football or baseball or something as a kid you get into that point like where could you really get that's 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 the issue with like the u.s when it comes to weightlifting Mm -hmm. it's getting better because you have coaches you have coaches and programs that facilitate growth for kids and getting them there like we have at soca we have a specific youth program and so and all all of them are working hard but there's one girl in particular who has been doing it for the last few years and she is she's up she's like she's up there with some of the like her numbers are up there with some of the beginner level adult weightlifters and she's like she's 13 14 so mm-hmm. it's just crazy to see that what happens when she gets to like my age because she's 14 right now and another mm-hmm you know 11 years where's she gonna be what's she gonna do so it takes it's the talent is out there the talent is out there i weightlifting i weightlifting it's like with anything that you're really really passionate about like Mm -hmm. you're really gonna have to love it and and struggle for a little bit if you want to get to a a certain point with it well i think that'd be a good kind of segue back to you when did you kind of fall in love with weightlifting so I, <clears throat> right after so if if you can't tell from like the videos that I put on like social media and that kind of stuff like obviously <clears throat> obviously I have some pretty deep seated like mental health issues some mm-hmm. problems that I'm squaring away and like taking care of and mm-hmm. we could talk about it if you want to but um <clears throat> like growing up like growing up it was definitely like sports trying to do sports, trying to find something that would get me to the next level. That's just something that my dad always wanted me to pursue. Mm -hmm. And then when, you know, when, excuse me, when baseball didn't pan out, uh, baseball didn't pan out in a weird way where that my freshman year in high school, I didn't, like before I even got there, I didn't go to the camp. Mm-hmm. So when they went to the camp, like when you go to the camp, they kind of select their team. 
and yeah. I didn't make it. They're like, you come back, you can try out next year. I was like, okay, cool. I get pulled up to varsity football the end of my freshman year. And then shortly after that, that's when I got hurt. I got hurt for mm-hmm. the first time. And total during foot like during high school football, I got hurt six times, three times on each knee. So um every year when tryouts were supposed to be had for baseball, I was always hurt because of football. And that sucked. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, how much am I gonna like I gotta then I gotta put more into football and do this more into football. Mm-hmm. and then it just never panned out. I kept getting hurt, I could never play. I think I played one entire game in all of three years where from my freshman year when I got pulled up and Mm -hmm. towards the end of my yeah towards the end of my senior year I got I I just got hurt again and uh for like the final time and that's when I was like yo maybe it's time to really reconsider and try to do something else Mm -hmm. um so like uh, it was like when, when sports didn't pan out, when that didn't pan out, it was just like, what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And that's when, like, after high school, it was like really, really rough because, I, you know, I, I, I have, I definitely have, like, I know I do. I have really severe depression and okay. some really, I've just the inability to be empathetic and patient with myself. I, mm-hmm. It was a lot worse back then. There was, it's a lot worse back then. It was always like, what's next? What's next? What's next? It's like, you got to keep moving, got to keep doing something. Mm-hmm. Um, and eventually it just really all came to a halt when real life happened. <clears throat> and I had, I've never been a good student never been a good student, never played, like never did well at school. So I, when I, I had tried to, I had basically applied and got into Cal State San Marcos, which is a kind of a given. It was just a feeder. It's a, a, our high school was one of the feeder schools to that. So it's like, you would apply, you just kind of get in automatically. Mm -hmm. So I got in and I got in and then I got kicked out of my house shortly after graduation that's a fun story but i got kicked out of my house shortly after graduation so i was kind of homeless for a little bit working at a pizza place and i was like man life is pretty awful right now like it hadn't been good but it was a lot worse at that moment and and uh I had, mm, I had, there's a lot of backstory that's missing to this story, but Mm -hmm. essentially, essentially, um, my, I have, uh, my dad, Caesar, who is, who is my father, he raised me and I have, uh, my mom's husband, my mom's husband, Brian, they're married and they're separated. So she's Mm -hmm. you know she's living her life has her kids and you know her and i have a relationship and i go and like throughout high school i would like go and see him and then my my uh my biological father he uh he is an artist and he lives up in san francisco or he like up in that area so Mm -hmm. after high school i like was like in a really bad spot and i like kind of said I'm going to leave and just kind of dip. And I went up to go live with him. And that's where I started going to the gym. I just started going to the gym and I was up there for a couple months, like over the summer. Cause I was like, I'm going to come back, go to school, do that kind of stuff. And, um, I started going to the gym, started training. I started training with like goals in mind Mm -hmm. and just like trying to feel better. I felt like I was doing productive stuff. Like we were traveling, we were doing stuff. Cause like I said, he's an artist and he has like, but like a career. Mm-hmm. So we were just kind of going around together. And then him and I got into a fight where I ended up coming back home and staying back home, going right back to that pizza place job. But I was like, okay, I liked 
training. I like going to the gym. And that's when my mm -hmm. friends approached me with like, hey, let's start training again. It wasn't, I, it wasn't until it was like, you know, when you're really low, it's like, there's a really mm -hmm. low point in your life and you need something it's like, you need some sort of hope to kind of keep you going. Mm -hmm. Like that's literally, that's kind of where I was. Like I was at my wits end and like had no real prospects on anything in my life. And it, the only thing that I really had was going to the gym and trying to learn like snatch and clean and jerk and learning these lifts, knowing like understanding that I was bad at it and thinking like, Hey, there's a chance that I could be good at something. <clears throat> that's, that's really what it was. It was just a challenge, like the challenge to be good and at least okay at something and mm -hmm. I, and like over the course of time that idea has stayed the same where i'm just trying to get better but that level of better gets more and more elevated so like before it was just like like there's a there's a video that i put together on youtube <clears throat> it was it's called hung up on the come up um but you could see my progression from like the very first snatch that i did in mm -hmm. a gym it was, what is it, 95 pounds, right? Yeah, it was like 95 pounds. And it's, you know, it's bad. Mm -hmm. It's like the first snatch that I've done. I'm not really like too comfortable on the bar. And then it ends. And then 30 minutes into the video, it because it's a 30 minute long video for some reason, I put all, I literally like, put all of the videos together but towards the end there's a um probably one of the best snatches i had ever done it's 150 kilos it's a 330 pounds <clears throat> and it was the the progress from that one to that one where in between if you're like really pay attention like you can just kind of see everything change you can see like my demeanor you can see how i approach things and you can just mm -hmm. see it all change and you know, from that guy who's snatching 95 pounds, I remember, I remember back then, <laughs> the, like how we talked about like Matt Fraser and like CrossFit and stuff. Like there's that, that one video of Matt Fraser snatching 315. You ever see that one? I'm sure I have. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like, it's like super classic. It's just like, yeah. he's just there. And I think he's like wearing the red shorts. He's got like no shirt on. Yeah. And he's like, it's the one where he's like, up oh, that one. Yeah. Yeah, so he that's I remember seeing that video and I was like, okay, so like a real big goal of mine would be snatched 315. And I was snatching 95 pounds at the time, you know. And then obviously from there, you know, eventually I got to the point where I was like, I was doing that and I had done it. And it was like, okay, so one what's 143. It's like 143, maybe, you know, 150, something, you know, mm -hmm. they're clean and jerk the same thing where it's like, I want to clean and jerk, you know, 170, 175, 180. It was for me, for me, I have always set these like, not unrealistic, but mm -hmm. these pretty steep goals and you know i've been criticized for it before i've been you know i've been i've you know i've sat back and doubted myself on it before but it's it's kind of it's one of those things where it's like what else would you be doing like you, do you really are you really joining are you really doing something to really just be average at it like are you really mm -hmm. doing it and there's nothing wrong with that that's the one thing that I think it's the one thing that sometimes gets mixed up in the language that I use where mm -hmm. for me personally, and it's probably because of some deep rooted psychological issue, but for me personally, I understand that I don't want to be average at this one thing, especially if I've put all this time into it, mm -hmm. that goes for weightlifting, that goes for the content that I create, it goes for a lot of it. 
mm-hmm. <clears throat> but there's no there's no problem in wanting to do it because that's not like wanting to get to the absolute tippy top if that's not what your goal is. Mm-hmm. But whatever your goal is, do everything you can to to get to that point. Mm-hmm. You got to do everything you like. If you're going to do something, go all the way. That's that's one. Th- that's a quote that I heard a long time ago. Where it was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, so like back in the day when I was sitting there snatching ninety five pounds or clean and jerking three fifteen, you know, those videos were funny. But if you watch that, if you should watch that video. It does like there's like there's like I'm clean I like clean and jerk like two twenty five and my split is like six inches long. I was like, what are you <laughs> doing, bro? But <clears throat> yeah, like back to that guy where it was, you know, like I remember specifically the day that I decided that I wanted to be an Olympic weightlifter and get mm-hmm. to the Olympics. And that was I just I don't remember I I, I was stuck between going back to school to do something that I probably wouldn't end up being in the field of anyway Mm -hmm. or dedicating my life to the sport that had made me feel so significantly better and I was like I understand that there's no like I understand that there's no money in it I understand that there's no real opportunity until you get to the tippy top and it's like mm-hmm. now i understand like the funny thing is you don't even have to be at the at the tippy top to be supported by other people that's mm-hmm. I, and i'm when i say support it's like support financially like you don't have to that's that's the funny thing about it i was i was so freaked out about oh man how am i gonna live like how am i gonna make money how am i gonna do this stuff and support myself i mean most most people obviously like they're working jobs and they're doing it. Mm-hmm. I think, I think the only person that I, I know maybe I can count the people on one hand who actually do weightlifting full time because they can, uh, and they can support themselves. And one of them is Kate Viber. And uh, that, and she told me that at, oh, well, she said, and the, she said that at her seminar, which when she was at SoCal like two weeks ago. Um, but she's like, if I want it, like if I, if I, I, she's like the amount that I train and what I do, I could still work and Mm -hmm. train for the world championships and the Olympics and doing that kind of stuff. If she wanted to, she could, Mm -hmm. but she's like, I don't because you know, how many, she can explain to a job like, yeah, I'm going to be gone for three weeks ahead of a time because I'm training to represent the country. You know, it's, it makes more sense for her not to. Mm-hmm. but she said that she could if she like she could still work if she wanted to and support herself that way which is like you're always going to be working like you're always going to be working you're always going to have to have something that helps support it unless you're very fortunate and set yourself up in a way where it doesn't you know you don't mm-hmm. have to you don't have to work and you can just focus on weightlifting full-time but i remember being in a real crossroads because of that and i remember like i was driving I was driving home after work. I remember the sun being in my eyes and I was like, I was like, why am I so emotional about this right now? And I was at like, a, it was really like a, it was like a real challenging moment. Like it was one of those moments that like real, like really defined where I was at that moment in my life. And I have mm-hmm. stuck to it ever since. Um, but I remember almost getting home and I pulled over, I pulled over in the, in the, uh, target parking lot by my house and i sat there and i cried for a while and i don't i just i was just so like emotional about the fact that it was like okay there's purpose again like there's a real purpose Mm -hmm. to my life again and i'm gonna do it and i want to do it as best as i can i want to take it as far as i can and then from that moment on everything kind of shifted everything just kind of changed where instead of going to work instead of going to work and then going oh i like i gotta go to the gym it was oh i gotta go to the gym and then i gotta go to work right Mm -hmm. it was changing the way that you perceive that goal and the action steps to take towards that where it was okay every day or 
for, you know, four or five times a week, I have to go to the gym because this is, this is what I do. And then, and then everything else fits around it. Yeah. And yeah. that's where, that's where I found myself for the first couple of years where I was still like really developing, really trying to get a hold of what I was as a weightlifter. And then that's where we eventually, you know, that's where we eventually found, uh, like our first coach, like, cause it was a group, it was, it was essentially just a group of me and my friends mm-hmm. where we all started away. And I'm, I'm the only, like me and <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's just a group of us. And that's why I keep referring to us as we, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but that's when we found our first coach and then eventually, you know, just moved on. Can you be quiet, please? <laughs> um yeah but that's 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 just where taking that you know taking that initiative and and really deciding what's going to change that's where mm-hmm. that's where it was pretty crazy yeah no the uh i think the idea of somebody going all in on something that's something i admire in people and um having like this, the the mental focus to do one thing I think is so like inspiring and cool. Uh, I'm definitely not that person. I do a bunch of stuff. It's go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, what I was going to say is I think it's, I think it's cool. when somebody says, I want to see where this can take me and I was going to give it my all. Um, and hearing that from somebody's like, Oh man, like, maybe they don't have it all figured out. And, you know, the older you get, you realize the people in your life didn't have everything all figured out that you kind of thought did. Um, but you, you look at somebody, it's like, well, they have chosen to like focus, say like yourself on weightlifting, like everything else works around it. Um, it, it's cool to see somebody do that. And like, I train a lot, um, in different things, but it's all around my work schedule. Um, and so yeah, like work is definitely a priority right now, but try to fit everything else in as well. But if one thing has to stay, it's, I have to have right now in my life is get the, the job done for work and then fit everything else in around. But I think it's cool when somebody like, I don't know, like yourself or like Matt Fraser, he's like, I'm not doing anything else. I'm focusing on CrossFit like back in the day before he like retired. Yeah. But have you found it easier to kind of train and continue on your journey, focusing all in on weightlifting? So that that's what I was going to say. There's, okay. there's a detriment to it. And mm-hmm. I think that's, that's the one thing. That's the one thing I don't see a lot of enough representation of is the fact that going all in on one thing is definitely it's like a it's a double-edged sword Mm -hmm. because yeah absolutely you can focus all of your efforts on one thing but when that one thing doesn't pan out or when that one thing isn't coming to you or isn't happening as easily as it used to or Mm -hmm. you keep running into setback after setback that's a real hard thing to to endure and the problem with that is is like yeah like yeah when i was when i was when i started started weightlifting in in 2016 and i was was like 19 and i'm 25 now okay the first like obviously like the first year you get into it uh, Mm -hmm. and progression obviously like you understand with crossfit and just progression scale in general with novice newbies novice lifters and how they how they excel when you first start your progression is just skyrockets like straight up so so obviously the first like year or two are just like pr and pr and getting stronger getting stronger everything's good everything's going positive and then you start to plateau or you get injured. Mm-hmm. And my biggest problem is the fact that because of 
I am I'm grateful to I'm grateful to every every coach that I have had mm-hmm. like I've ever had, especially when it comes to weightlifting, because now I think I am on the cusp of doing weightlifting as a sport longer than I played baseball, which is crazy to me because that's like like two entire lifetimes of of a sport and one of them unfortunately came to an end Mm -hmm. and and with all the coaches that i've had you know they've all benefited me and they've all helped me out and and they've gotten me helped me get to where i am um every coach is different and every coach teaches the lifts different Mm -hmm. and uh they're depending on experience and stuff you know like obviously like a more seasoned coach is going to understand how to deal with a lifter like myself and a lifter like myself is when I came into the sport, you know, when I came into the sport or when I got to the point where I was like on like my first real plateau where I was like snatching like one thirties and then clean and Mm -hmm. drinking like one eighties. Like I was, I was hitting those numbers pretty consistently and I was back squatting like 300, like front squatting like 250, like all this, all this stuff. And I was just very, very, very strong, but I moved terribly. I was a very bad mover. And my first real significant injury I got was a wrist injury that took me out for a few months. It took me out for like six months. And that was, that was hard. Like that was hard. That was like my first real injury. I was set back. I had just, I think I had just like come back from nationals. Uh, I just come back from like two nationals and I competed there. Actually, no, it's one. <clears throat> but uh, just getting hurt in the process of it. If mm-hmm. your you know dedication, like if that if that thing isn't if that reason and that purpose and that why is strong enough, that that'll really deter you. And then obviously, like with injuries, it's getting better, rehabbing it. You know, you're not lifting as much, so you have to push through that. So I got through that first injury, came back, and that's when I, I, I came back and then I competed at the under 25 national championships. And then that's that's mm-hmm. when I won. So I I won that oh, yeah. that title. And um that was cool. That was very cool. And then that was 2020. That was February of 2020. And then the world shut down a month later. Mm-hmm. So it was training remotely, training in my garage uh had to switch teams like i switched teams i went from i went from sage's gym to juggernaut and and remote coaching is remote coaching is hard remote coaching is definitely hard i in my my perspective is you know you have to have a really 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 well balanced very you know responsible athlete that mm-hmm. can move well and only needs like minimal cueing <laughs> where essentially you're just watching these lifts, but they can self-regulate um, to, to like really make it effective. Mm-hmm. Because if you have somebody like, like me who it, it move bad, is very strong, you're going to get what you got with me. And that was, you know, like I was, I was hitting these, really big lifts really dumb looking bad technique lifts but they were strong you know i had cleaned 200 off the blocks like i cleaned there was a there was a a period of time where i had block cleans programmed uh every week for like a month and i hit like 190 200 200 210 and then the following week i was like i was trying to go for 220 but that didn't happen and uh yeah, it was just like, eventually that came to an end where I got hurt again. I hurt my mm-hmm. wrist again. And that second, that like second wrist injury, I was like, okay, it's not as bad because I've done it before. I've gone through this before. I can do it again. I was also switching teams from Juggernaut to SoCal, which gave me the opportunity to learn the new technique. Because the one thing that I appreciate about my coach very much, Chris Amenta out of SoCal Weightlifting, um, yeah, I, I went up there a couple of times. I'd met him like once or twice before and mm-hmm. I met him a couple of times. And then when I started training there, he goes, 
uh, eventually he told me he was like yeah you're strong it's like but you move like shit <laughs> and i was like yeah i go yeah like, exactly like i'm not Somebody's gotta like say it. i like you gotta fix like it's like okay bro like uh, fix me please um because that like again like that was the thing like going into socal i was like already squatting like my best back squat was 330 and you know i i had sna- i had snatched 160 and cleaned 210 up blocks and like strength wise i was like super high but my technique mm-hmm. level was like very 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 low and that i was like that's where i ended up hurting myself so it gave me the time to basically start from scratch relearn technique and like relearn technique and get better get my wrist healthy again and that that year that was basically 2021 that was like my whole year 2021 and then we the progress from 20 like from the basically from like when i started lifting again in like january Mar- uh, february march mm-hmm. to nationals in in june that was really rough like like when i went to when i went to nationals i didn't perform very well that was my first like that was my first meet in a long time I had my first national meet in a long time, especially with like COVID and all that stuff. So I was very weirded out and I felt like I let everybody down because I gave, you know, I only really had like, I had less than six months to prepare. We're trying to learn new techniques, trying to learn everything new. And, you know, it was, I felt like I let a lot of people down. They all tell me I didn't, but I, I feel that way. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, we'll come back and do it again. We'll do better. Like, we'll just learn more. So that's really all we had to keep doing. And from June, July to December of 2021, that's when I think I had like my best stretch of training where I felt confident. I felt really good about weightlifting. Mm -hmm. Like I was moving in the right direction. I was kind of, for a long time, I was moving pretty side to side. Like it was pretty, like essentially just a plateau. Like I felt like I had gotten to a point and I really wasn't getting any better. And then I started, started trickling up again, like trending upwards. Mm -hmm. And then the hardest part was towards December. That's when I got my most current injury. And that was my, that was, I had a, a teller this, tendonitis. This past December? Yeah, in, okay. well, yeah, in 2021. <laughs> and I've been dealing with it ever since. So in 2021, like December, I had some patellar tendonitis that turned into full-blown quad tendonitis. That ended up riding all the way up into my groin on my left leg. It was pretty aggressive. Like, and like, I, it was my fault for pushing through it, you know, mm-hmm. and like not saying anything about it and not taking care of it like I should have. You know, it's it's one of those things where as an athlete, like, <laughs> yeah, you have this, this grind set, bro. Like, it's time to grind. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. But at the same time, it's like, yo, dog, like, longevity bro like what are you doing like mm-hmm. this has set me back an entire almost okay we'll, I'll, I'll touch on that it has slowed things down the last year it hasn't it hasn't stopped me but it slowed mm-hmm. me down definitely but there was a the, when i knew that it was hurt because most of my other injuries had been like a like a full-blown something happened like oh, like okay. a like a lift took me out this was one of those that was like, I had to take myself out because I was like, yo, this is bad. But I was the, the I remember the training session, but I was like my, I had wave sets of, of snatch up to 145 and then clean and jerk sets up to 180. And I made all the snatches because for some reason, snatches put me in a position that didn't hurt, but it was cleans and especially jerks. Mm-hmm. And then I remember like gutting, I got up to like 60 and I couldn't jerk anymore. So I told Spencer, the other, like my other coach, I was like, yeah, I can't, I can't jerk. He's like, fine, just clean it. So I go 60, 70, and I get to 80. And then when I clean 80, it's like bad. Like I jump like a foot and a half back because I can't push through my left leg. I was like, what is good? Like, man, this is bad. Mm-hmm. So I put 150 on because that was the wave set. And when I put 150 on, when I cleaned it, it was like it was like my left leg had an on and off switch and it's like somebody flicked it off when i started pushing um 
So basically like my whole body shifted over to my right and I like I cleaned it with one leg. And when I stood up, I was like, yo, yo, this is bad. This is real bad. So I stopped. And I was like, what do I do? Like I started talking like Christine, she's our team PT. Like she helps us out. Um, she's been helping me out this entire last year. Like started mm -hmm. coming back started coming back and started, you know, basically in December, uh, aside from the one little, one little 140 snatch I had in, at, at American open finals in the, uh, in the, in the training hall, because the energy was there. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to send it. But yeah, I got, I got yelled at after that, <laughs> but basically from December Mind you, so like that entire time where my left leg isn't working, my right leg is taking the load on, right? Mm -hmm. So basically from December to February, March, yeah, February, I'm rehabbing it. I'm bringing it up. I'm getting everything better. Uh, luckily at SoCal, we have a lot of, like we have a lot of, uh, I guess you like connections. Like we definitely have like connections to sports scientists and that kind of stuff. So we had mm -hmm. force plates that we could kind of have you ever worked with force place before uh -uh. so force place essentially tests the amount of force that you're putting into the ground oh okay yeah yeah so we, the way we test it is with like an isometric hold where we have like a barbell and we can like basically pull we're not like we're like we're kind of wedged and we're pulling up on a rack we're pulling the bar and that allows you to, to measure the amount of force you can put into the ground so the recommended amount of imbalance that you have between two legs, maximal is 15%. That's 15% before you get injured. I was at 46%. Yeah. It was well. Insane. So that we took that test back in like December. Mm -hmm. um, so getting back, so it was like, okay, we're slowly and slowly climbing back to get to where we were before <clears throat> so around february a lot of the inflammation had gone down and i was feeling good like i had started snatching like up into mm -hmm. the 80 90 percent so i even snatched 150 on the day and then i was cleaning and i, I chris told me that i should just power clean everything so i could just test so i could just keep staying connected just power clean until i can't and then go into a full clean yeah. And I ended up cleaning power cleaning 175. But my best power clean is 180. So we threw 182 on. And when we threw 182 on, when I power cleaned it, I ended up spraining the same quad tendon on my left leg. So that set everything back even further. Hmm. And while I was working on all of that stuff, you know, my right leg is taking more of the brunt of it. Mm -hmm. So my right knee is acting up as far as like the tendonitis on my right knee. So it was just bad news. And yeah. I've just been, this, essentially this whole last year has just been just, you know, dealing with these injuries and getting back. Um, <clears throat> the load was load is greater than capacity, right? Mm -hmm. But essentially just to, to tie it all back to where we were at before talking about, talking about, how to stay in it and, and dedicating you know and just kind of the double-edged sword is the fact that <clears throat> with all those injuries and all that stuff and how i said like it didn't stop me it just slowed me down mm -hmm. you kind of have to look at the benefits <laughs> you kind of have to look at the the benefits of being able to slow down a little bit where this last year a lot of my lifts had been between 60 and 80 percent right those are technique and technical strength like technical strength those are the those are the percentages where you develop the most you need mm -hmm. more reps at 70 75 80 percent than you need more reps at you know 90 95 100 yeah if you think that you don't you're wrong <laughs> but i spent the last year doing that basically mm -hmm. practicing just lifting and in the last year 
even even compared to to last year when I was still like when I was on SoCal in the very beginning, like their technique has improved dramatically. And that's that's kind of the thing where it's like you just need more reps. Mm-hmm. Like you need more reps, more and more reps. And and that kind of goes with everything where it's like you could take that with anything that you do. <laughs> you could take that with anything that you do that if if you the more you practice and the more you like the more you practice and the more you just produce and the more you actively try in those percentage mm-hmm. ranges, like whatever it may be, obviously the end result is going to be better if you practice more and more things that are technically and percentage wise easier. Right. Yeah. But you could like, like I said, you can allude that to anything else that you do, but ultimately the double-edged sword part of dedicating your entire life to something is yeah, one injury is fine, two injury fine. Cause those only last a few months. Yep. The real test, the real test comes with what happens when you have an injury that lasts over a year. You know, mm-hmm. I haven't like what happens when you don't see any real production or any real products any real forward progress being made because the last time I PR'd was in my garage, uh, was in my garage in 2020. So mm-hmm. it's been two full years since I've put anything close to a PR on a bar. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's one of those things where if that thing that you want and the thing that you've dedicated your life to, in a sense, if that's, if that matters to you, and it's what you want. It doesn't matter the setback. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's the one thing. <laughs> and that's the one thing that I'm more proud of myself now than anything is the fact that regardless of how bad weightlifting has gotten and how bad like that mental space around it has gotten, is I've tried a bunch of things to try and continue to go. Because mm-hmm. I, I, if there's if there's anything I, that I've heard from all those people that like all those champions and all those people that people tend to look up to as far as like sports and yeah. really anybody, but it's like, it's the people who don't ever stop that get there mm-hmm. because most people will stop. And if you just don't stop, like if you don't stop, that's, that's where the real power is. Yeah. Like you will get to, like you will get what you want in a sense. If you just don't stop, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean to kill yourself over it. And <laughs> And be so so toxically just so toxic in the sense where it's like, oh, I have to keep going. I have to keep going. Yeah. Despite all this, like it, the it's really funny that we that we're talking about it because the last trash alley video that I'm going to be working on today was about toxic positivity. Mm-hmm. It's essentially the same thing where where toxic positivity lies and like where it manifests empathy doesn't exist Mm -hmm. so if you are toxically positive to yourself in a sense where it's like oh like i just gotta keep going doesn't matter like it doesn't matter like other people have it worse other people have it worse i've been through worse and you keep pushing on those emotions down where it's like you have to be where you have to be tough you know, the thing that it's just the thing that everybody does it, but it's it's predisposed in guys where it's like, oh, we're going to stuff it down. Mm-hmm. We're just going to stuff it down so we don't ever think about it. Yeah. 100%. It's, yeah. It's, there's no there's no empathy when it comes to that. And if you don't mm-hmm. empathize with yourself, or you don't understand what it is that you need. How are you ever going to allow yourself to perform at the best level possible? Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> in this situation where it's like yeah the best never quit doesn't mean that you have to absolutely try to just fist your way through it you have to like take some time to reevaluate how to like reevaluate and reassess how to continue going because Mm -hmm. if something's not working and you want to keep going eventually you will burn out like eventually you will burn out or you will just stop because be just because you just don't want to do it anymore because mm-hmm. then when you, that's when you come to a real crossroads where it's like 
it's like a it's like a life or death thing where it's like I either stop, like I if I stop, if I stop, I'm if I don't stop, it's gonna kill me, and if I do stop, it's gonna kill me. You know, mm-hmm. and it's that's the biggest <clears throat> that's the biggest roadblock that I faced this last year with a lot of weightlifting in particular. It's the fact that injuries in the beginning are not so difficult mainly because it's like okay i've done this before i've gone through an injury i'll be back in no time Mm -hmm. okay so what happens when it's not no time anymore what happens when it's like oh shit now it's like now we're looking at six seven eight now it's a year Mm -hmm. but a year almost it's almost been a year for me since i got hurt that's the longest injury i've ever had and you know it sucks it like it does it does stuff to you that right? where it's like i see all these i see all of my teammates all of my friends all of the people that i've trained with and i've seen them get better but they haven't seen me get better mm-hmm. you know that hurts that sucks well is it you know you say you, the last year you've been spending at 60 to 70 percent for your lifts yeah. right um and you've gotten so much better in technique right yeah um do you recognize how much better the support system of your body has gotten over the last year? Um, and when you do eventually try to go higher, how much like better your foundation will be? Oh yeah. I think that's, that's the what I think that's the one thing where that's the one thing where I'm like, there's, there's always been a sense of confidence. Mm-hmm. There's always been a sense of confidence. Before it was confidence because I'm like, oh, I'm strong. I'll just make the lift. I'll just make it. But yeah. now it's turned into I actually know and I actually understand how to move. I understand my body. I understand what I need to do <laughs> on a deeper level that allows mm-hmm. me to do this. And and like, yeah, I, I I definitely feel where if I like throwing heavier weights on a bar, I'm gonna know how to move precisely. Yeah. Instead of, instead, I, there was one thing I had a, a while back, I had a sports psychologist. It was just something that I tried out, but, um, I told him a long time ago that, uh, when I first started, when I first started weightlifting, it just tends to be most people's attitudes, but when they first start anything, but something like weightlifting or a sport or something, mm-hmm. they're like, I'm trying to be like, they're like. I'm a try to be like a junkyard dog, right? They're just trying to get after it. They're just trying to yeah. just blow up and just super intense. It's like the intensity overtakes the intensity overtakes. And then, you know, that it's just, you know, this is a junkyard dog mentality. Mm-hmm. You have that in any sport that you do. And I told him this and I was like, for a long time, like I, I want, as I told him, it's like, I want to get back to that junkyard dog. Like before there was, a, I was going through a lull where I was like, very like it was getting very upset and like just not bringing intensity to training i was Mm -hmm. like i just want to be that junkyard dog again he's like why he's like think about it he's like okay you hop the fence so you hop the fence and a junkyard dog comes to get you the dog is going to bite you everywhere the dog will bite you on the leg bite you on the hands the face the arms like maybe get you like maybe get your throat Maybe mm-hmm. get you know, maybe get some area that that incapacitates you, that puts you down, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, but there's that's all that's all up to chance. That's like that's just like if the dog is, if the dog knows what he's doing, yeah. It's like, why don't you want to be a police dog? He's like, I'm like a police dog. He's like, yeah. It's like a police dog. Like they're trained to go for the throat, the first bite. So I said, why don't you want to be one of those? And I was like. Jesus, Eric, you're just destroying my entire life right now. <laughs> but it like it makes sense where it's yeah, you know, yeah, I had that attitude before where I was just like, okay, grip, rip, just, yeah. just go. But now it's like, yeah, you want to be it like it's, you want to be a killer, like you want to be a killer in all aspects. Like you mm-hmm. want to, and it, it kind of goes with everything too, where it, it just every everything because it's it's just a general rule that I feel like can can like can transcend across anything that anyone does and it's like yeah being a junkyard dog is good as far as energy as far as energy and passion 
but I think as you as you get older and as you realize that like there's time frames and there's specific things that you need and you need to be like to get to the Olympics is a process. Mm -hmm. You have to get you have to do these meets. You have to do good at these meets. You have to do you have to hit this, this and this specifically a junkyard dog is not going to be capable of doing it. You need to be a killer. You mm -hmm. know, you need to be someone that can perform. And as much as, yeah, like, and as much as it makes me sad where I'm sitting there watching my friends and my teammates get better, you know, get better and, and their numbers are going up and mine aren't. It's like, you kind of have to set that aside and go, okay, okay. What am I doing? I am definitely getting better. I am, I am improving. I'm getting mm -hmm. better. There's a period of time where I couldn't do any full lifts and like, I was doing a bunch of bodybuilding. I've never been able to do a pull up. And then when I, I did like a, like a cycle of bodybuilding and I was able to do like, I was able to do like 15 pull ups with a band. And then I was like one pull up, one pull up without a band. I was like, life goal. That was it. I'm just done. I'm like, I'm just like, retire yeah. right now. <laughs> but it's, it's, yeah, it's like you're improving in all of these things. And then it's also like the one, like a very bad habit that I have. And it's probably something that, everyone has is the fact that when you understand or like when you understand that there are things that you want to achieve and there's things that you want to do the ability or the enthusiasm to do and try everything all at once tends to get the best of you so like a personal thing for me is like i'm really bad at food and dieting I'm not dieting, but I'm really bad at nutrition. But that's a mm -hmm. huge part of recovery where it's like, as especially as a super, I'm like, dog, like, you, like I should be eating. <clears throat> like I should be eating consistently, mm -hmm. right? But before I was sitting at maybe like one meal a day, one and a half meals a day, just not eating. And that's something that all of my coaches just been on my ass about, right? And it's like, and I like, I try, like I tried, like I tried, what I would do is like try to get nutrition coaches. Mm -hmm. Try to get nutrition coaches. Oh my goodness! I tried getting nutrition coaches, and uh, like they gave me macros, they gave me stuff to eat, you know. And I'm sitting there trying to do all this. Basically, go from not eating at all mm -hmm. to okay, all right. Now I got to fit 300 grams of protein. 500 grams like 500 600 grams of carbs and like 100 grams of fat like what like bro i like i was barely eating one meal a day it's so hard. so it's like doing stuff like that where going into it like going into it you're not setting yourself up like it has to become a habit right mm -hmm. so that's the problem that i've that i've run into a lot where you know trying to do too much at once that it just it just leads it just leads to to burnout it just leads to um yeah. I'm just can't do it but in the opportunity that I've had to take a step back finally because I'm not like I'm not and I'm not going to lie as this injury has progressed like as the, the length of time as the length of time that this injury has gone on my general mental state has gone down because it gets harder mm -hmm. over the course of time. It gets way almost unbearable where any normal person would quit. Right. Again, mm -hmm. it just, it's just depend on what's your reason. Like what's your, why, why do you want to do this? Yep. <laughs> and, and I was definitely periods over the course of the last year where I was like, like right when my injury happened, I was like, okay, I'll just come back. Like it got, it got good. Like I was up here. Like I was up here as far as mm -hmm. mental space. I was like, okay. And then the second injury happened and I was like, okay. And then the third one happened. And then I was like, oh, like what's not working? What's not mm -hmm. happening? Like, well, I'm trying to do all this stuff and I'm doing all this stuff and it's just not getting better. What is going on? And at a certain point, there was like a shift of focus and a shift of perspective where in the middle of in the middle of recovery and trying to be a good athlete 
you know, I had like my social media kind of blew up and like there was the trash alley stuff that started happening mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I started getting like I started getting more sponsors and stuff where they were like, We love your content, we love what you do, we want to be you know, we want to be a part of you, like we want you to be a part of us. And I'm not gonna lie. It definitely took a shift in weightlifting, took a back seat because it was like, man, nothing is working. Nothing is going on. I have no idea what to do. And mm -hmm. I just needed something to focus on and something to switch because it was like, I can't keep doing this. Like, I can't, I feel so bad. Like, I rate, like, really? And it, it kind of hit me in the last, like, the last couple of months where I was like, I, weightlifting is not fun. Like I'm not having fun with training. I'm not having fun showing up to the gym. I'm doing it because I know I have to, but this is not fun anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, I, that's the truth. And I, it might not be the truth for everybody, but it's definitely mm -hmm. the truth in, in the sense of like, what we've been talking about this whole time where it's like, you dedicate your life to one thing. If that one mm -hmm. thing isn't panning out. It feels like your entire life is just now pointless and worthless. And I'm <laughs> like, if you have if you have mental health issues that feed into that dude it's a recipe for disaster and that's why mm -hmm. one of the biggest things that i've like i've now have finally just like finally decided to take a step forward with is going to see a, a trauma therapist and like basically try to get some more meaning and value to like and coping mechanisms on how to deal with stuff when on how to deal with stuff when my life weightlifting the stuff that i put forth goes bad because mm -hmm. that's that's i and like it's habitually like every injury that i've had i've gotten like just really upset really upset afterwards mm -hmm. really self-destructive afterwards where i like <clears throat> like really self-destructive afterwards really just like a really bad spot mentally so it's <clears throat> it's that's that's the hard bat. That's the hard part. It's it's really trying to to stay up and just stay with it. So that's why you have to focus on these other things and these other little things that allow you to add to the big picture. That's why like mm -hmm. talking about nutrition, like that's why when I like partnered up with RP and you know, I have like and I have the RP app and like they support me, I was like, okay, this is cool. And like I, at a certain point, at a certain point, it's maybe, again, we're talking about, you know, empathy and that toxic positivity, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. But like at a certain point, you really do have to go like enough is enough. And that's just kind of where I was at mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago where I like told my coach, I was like, I, I'm going to like, I, I have to stop doing weightlifting right now just to give myself like a couple weeks break because yeah realistically like i have all like i've just always been training and mm -hmm. like in with and injuries are not time off if anything injuries are worse because you're yeah. like you're up here most of the time so i like took a couple week break i was i started like i was i started like really trying to dial in my diet with like with rp and doing that kind of stuff um it was just like trying to prioritize sleep trying to prioritize sleep, trying to prior, like prioritize recovery. Uh, really just like trying to be a good, a good athlete, like a good, mm -hmm. like a, just a good example for an athlete, you know, like, Oh, he eats, he sleeps, he trains, he trains, you know, he trains hard. He does mm -hmm. his accessory work. He does all this stuff, you know, it's just like back to basics. Really. It's just like trying to get back to basics because everything got so, convoluted and so emotional and so like mentally pulled away mm -hmm. it's 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 like it's kind of like going back to make that that same decision again that i made in the target parking lot it's like making that decision again it's like man what do you like what do you really want like what what do you want to do and if you if this is what you say that you want to do like then this then this shouldn't be a problem and that's kind of the, the shift that I had where it was like, now it's like, okay, all the, all the, all the accessory and all like, I do my warm up is like an hour long. 
yeah like i have like i get there i start stretching i have maybe i have maybe two or three different like like just different mixes of knee rehab stuff for both mm-hmm. legs that i do like warm up takes like 45 minutes to an hour then there's the then there's the actual like workout like actual training yep and then and then like the cool down basically another small round of the warm up stuff that i was doing you know and like yeah before before it was like like jesus christ like i have to be here for three and a half four hours like doing this stuff and just like it's like dragging it's like dragging my hands through glass just like just dragging ass and just like just like yeah like everything was just a slog and like i just didn't mm-hmm. want to do it and then having that perspective shift where it's like no everything that you do is for the purpose of getting back to what you want that's where yeah. i was like okay now i don't have much of a problem with it now i like go and i can warm up do that stuff and it's like even though it's i'm still battling with the same thing where like i wish i was sitting there lifting what you know lifting what john was doing or what benson was doing like my buddies who like have come in and like my other teammates and my other friends were like they're lifting bigger it's like i like knowing like i want to do that again i was like the only way that you can do that again is by doing this Mm -hmm. so i uh i I feel like i'm not a athlete is not my trait by any means um but i love running and crossfit and jujitsu and i've been i've had many knee surgeries in my I've had like three and just on one leg and so i know the the feeling of being put to the wayside and just like if i want to do a crossfit workout or olympic lifting at the gym i have to have at least a 30 minute warm-up or else i'm, I'm gonna my knees are going to get going to get worse. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I feel that and that's, it's awful. But uh, at the same time, I feel like, and this might just be me, but once I get to that point of where I'm warm and everything is moving good, it's so satisfying Yeah. to be able to, to do stuff again. Oh yeah. And like, yeah, and training has definitely picked up in the last couple, like it was like a week or so ago, I like snatched 130. I guess snatch 130 for the first time in a like in a minute, and then mm-hmm. just yesterday, just yesterday, I clean and jerk 160 for the first time in a while. So mm-hmm. it's like I snatched 125, clean and jerk 160. So I put up like a a 285 total, and that's you know that'll like that'll get me. And I like if I go compete, that'll win a that'll win a a local meet probably. Mm-hmm. You know that's not where I want to be, but yeah, like, I can't discount the fact that like there are people out there who are trying very, very hard to just get to where, you know, what my 70 percents are. And it's yeah. like, it's, that's, How that that's, feel? That's, yeah, that's like the, the shitty part where it's like, man, I like, I'm, I guess just sometimes like, you don't really understand until it's gone and it's taken away from you where it's like, I haven't back squatted. I haven't back squatted over 200 kilos since last year. And on average, like my like my squat workout, like my squat set, like my squat sessions when I was squat, like I'm sitting there anywhere between 250 and 300 kilos, and I haven't touched that in in years. Oh, not in years. What, what am I talking about? In a year. Yeah. Yeah. But like, man, what I would give to be able to put, like, I could probably do it. I could probably do like two anywhere between 220 and 250, but it's like. I, the ability to to do that and do that comfortably is something that's like i miss so much mm-hmm. i'd be able to snatch close to like 40 and 40 ish and then clean and jerk like 70 70 plus ish where it's you know the the stuff that were routine numbers even like being able to like now have essentially having to build back up to where those numbers are put on a on the sliding scale like the sliding spectrum of where those are because it always shifts you know depending on how in shape you are how strong you Mm -hmm. feel you know it's like it they shifted from like middle base like middle middle of the pack like routine numbers that i was hitting now they've shifted more back towards like 
oh, those are higher numbers again. Mm -hmm. Those are higher numbers, almost like PR kind, not PR kind of numbers, but those are higher intensity numbers that yeah. should realistically by now be on the lower spectrum because those, you know, training and hitting those numbers for another year, that's just how it works. The strength is like that sliding spectrum, but it's like, mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> that's, yeah, you don't really, you don't really like really appreciate it until it's gone. Yeah. But that, that was the thing where it's like in the beginning, like in the very, very beginning, it was like, okay, I'll be back in no time and I can do it. And, you know, but now it's like, that's where it's gotten progressively more and more difficult to, to, to not hit those numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, I remember I was just talking about it, but like talking about it with you where just kind of like that purpose and when that when the thing that you want most doesn't like is it panning out it mm -hmm. kind of makes you feel useless i remember there's this there was a time back in high school um when i i was hurt again and i like mm -hmm. and on, another reason why i don't like being hurt is again because of being useless but it's because of this one thing in particular but uh my coach, my head football coach, he had brought peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, or just like the fixings for him, uh, for the team for after after like a after a PE session, after like a, a weight room session, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he uh, like all the athletes are making peanut butter jelly sandwiches, and I go in and make one too, <clears throat> and he comes in and he sees me making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> And he goes, what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean, coach? He goes, those are for people who play. Whoa. And it's like, it's like, it's it's stuff like that. Like, it's stuff mm -hmm. like that, that I'm sure a lot of people have. It's, it's mm -hmm. experiences and traumas like that. Things that happen that leave a very sour taste in your mouth and really shift your perspective on certain things mm -hmm. that, that, end up rearing their ugly head when stuff like this happens yeah like i i like kind of like what i was talking to alluding to that point where i was like okay look mike like my football coach said that you know he said that to me obviously obviously he doesn't think that i'm shit because i'm not playing i'm not doing i'm not producing i'm just letting him down i'm letting mm -hmm. the team down right fast forward that was my junior senior in high school 2014 fast forward you know, nine, like eight or nine years, mm -hmm. I'm still struggling with the same issue, but, you know, but Chris would never say that to me. My coach would never like Chris now, like he would never say that to me. He would never say like, yeah. you're letting me down. You're letting the team down. But it's like that thing that's in me where it's like, am I letting everybody down? And that's where I like, that's what I struggle with it. Where it's like, it's kind of like that expectation of who you feel like you're supposed to be, mm -hmm. especially coming from like a position of this expectation that you've had, like that you've set for yourself. It's just that expectation. So coming in and especially when you like make it who you are, it's the same. It, you run into the same problem where it's like, if you're not doing that, not only does it shake your faith and your life and your mm -hmm. purpose, but it, it shakes your faith for everybody around you. It's like you just start doubting these things and start doubting who you are and start doubting. You just start doubting everything. I think that was the one big thing that I was, I was talking to one of my friends about recently, one of my teammates where I was like the confidence level, like a level of confidence. It was definitely, like I definitely had it. At the mm -hmm. end of the year, at the end of 2021, at the beginning of the year, just like, oh, I'll come back easy. But then as time goes on and you just, you, you just kind of, it's not that it's not there. You're just not familiar with it because you yeah. haven't, you haven't touched those numbers again, or you haven't put something out that is worth, you feel like you put something out that doesn't perform as well or something. It's just you need exposure 
to those things that allow you to be confident and allow you mm-hmm. to remember to, to remember who you are yeah what you're capable of and when you don't have that for an ex- like a prolonged amount of time that can definitely mess with you like yeah mm-hmm. I've I make the joke, like I make the joke to myself during training where I'm like the 70, 100 kilo snatch king. Cause I, like, I don't think anyone out there can move 100 kilos as good as me, but it's 100 kilos, you know? Like for me, I'm trying to snatch 180, 190, 200, mm-hmm. you know? But I'm stuck in this, I'm, nuts, stuck in, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm stuck in this realm where it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm the king of this. 100 kilos yeah. you know and it's it's just a job to tell myself but yeah like just not having a, a prolonged a, pro, a prolonged not being exposed to the things that make you feel good mm-hmm. and make you feel confident and make you feel like your life has a purpose yeah for a prolonged amount of time is not good for your mental health which is which mm-hmm. is why again like for me, I've kind of like, I kind of got lost in the sauce of, is it weightlifting or is it content creation? Like, what is it? How does it, how does it work? What is working? Yeah. Why? Like, and that's why the content creation stuff kind of took like a, a front run. Like, is that was making me feel better? I was feeling better yeah. about it. I would love to talk more about that. So yeah. kind of like your trash alley yeah. um, videos, kind of like, where did that start? And so uh, it's pretty funny but originally the very like the very first video the very first video that i made or that blew up it was the one that blew up on tiktok was um me and my teammate jordan she is 55 59 kilo weightlifter Mm -hmm. she uh she cleaned she's pound for pound she's like stronger than me she cleaned double bot like just shy of double body weight off the of blocks and if i were to do that i would i'd be cl- like cleaning world records off of blocks which is yeah it's insane so she's pound for pound like stronger than me and i had just recently gotten sponsored by virus so virus gave me some leggings and it was hot so i cropped a i cropped a a, a tank top so i'm wearing leggings a crop tank top and I think like my beanie or something. And Jordan like walks in front of the camera and she like, and she like makes a face. And I, and I like, we were just like, we were talking about SpongeBob and mm-hmm. I told her, I was like, Jordan I was like, your gym's over there. Weenie Hut Jr. is over there. This is the salty spittoon. And then she says, are you salty because I'm better than you? And I started laughing. I was like, oh my God, like it was a very good comeback. Like she like she burned the shit out of me. And and in the caption, in the caption on TikTok, I put it, I said, watch like watch me get abused by someone, like watch me get verbally abused by someone who's stronger than me. Cause it's the truth. It's literally what mm-hmm. happened. Cause she is stronger than me. And it popped off. It got like eight hundred thousand views. It was just crazy because I think mm-hmm. people were confused. I think people were like very, very confused. Like I think they thought that it was her that said it. Like yeah. she wrote, like she said that, like she said that about me. Like I, I was the one that was verbally abusing her, and I, I just think it, somewhere it just got like it just popped off. It was just the weirdest, the weirdest thing. But in the comments, there were some people that were talking about. There was one guy in particular who was talking about what I was wearing and he was like being aggressive, like he's being aggressively masculine about the whole thing. And it was, it was just talking, he was like, just talking about how I'm wearing like leggings. And then he starts talking about that's what's wrong with this generation of men, blah, 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 blah. And then he like, and then I comment back to him. I was like, bro, like relax. Like, they're just leggings or some so just something then he's like pops off again and then he's like says something like kind of homophobic mm-hmm. and i was like all right whatever like i'm like i'm just, i'm just gonna say something so then i made a video in response mm-hmm. to it it was the 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 first like clapback video that i did where i was like they're not women's leggings and it wouldn't matter if they were 
because I still look good in them anyway. It's like, but if you want to, you can use like, use my code and buy yourself a pair. And that popped off a little bit. And then he came back. And then what he said after that was like, that was the most aggressively homophobic thing that he said, just calling us all a bunch of Peter Pans and like, just, just like really stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so my very first Trash Alley video was the one where I, that was the one where I came around the corner and the plane comes back. It's like Return of the Mac is playing. And that's that was like 60 seconds. Mm-hmm. And that's where I like kind of popped off. And I was like, I'm sorry that your dad never told you that he loved you as a boy. And I was like, the problem with you is like, you're just not like, sorry that I'm more interesting. Sorry. Like, I, I why am I more? Why am I feminine? Because I paint my nails and I have piercings and I have long hair. And it's just that one's still like the most like one to today. In the beginning of the video, I throw a chair and I'm in like the front part of I'm in the front part of the alley, actually. So if you look at the back that the, the it's like the bricks and all the stuff in the actual alley are back there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then it just kind of progressed from there because I had more and more guys commenting and trying to break me down about like me wanting attention me wanting all this stuff and i just kept clapping back at all of these guys and like every all the videos just kept popping off because that's the one thing that's the one thing about <laughs> that's the one thing that i find very funny is that one none of these grown ass men if they're real profiles if they're real people because sometimes they're just not mm-hmm. would ever say that to anybody else's face and if they did they're a piece of shit. Yeah. Like if you're hoursly going and attacking somebody who's minding their own business because you don't like what they look like or what mm-hmm. they're saying, or like if you're just being aggressive about it and you're just going out of your way to try to put somebody down, like you're you're a dickhead. And that's the one thing that I've like never really have tolerated because like in high school I was in a leadership group, like trying to help like underclassmen, you know, I've I, I've I I resonate a lot more with I resonate a lot more with like the people who just never really speak up for themselves and like mm-hmm. can't really speak up for themselves and in a sense it's like what what's what's the guy gonna say to me what's this like the guy like the very first guy like he has his profile picture was him in the gym and I'm like like what's he gonna say to me bro like I. In, in the in the simplest sense, it's like, dude, like I squat seven, like I squat seven hundred and forty pounds, like, like I clean and jerk, like, like I can clean and jerk more than you could probably pull off the ground, bro. Like, what do you want? Like, I, like, there's <laughs> nothing you could say to me that would best me physically, probably. Yeah. And then the other thing is that you're just a, you're just an asshole, and I'm funny, and like people are going to gravitate more towards me if if you are the way that you are like i'm sorry that people are going to like me more dog mm-hmm. and that and it just like the the profiles that came out of the woodworks when they started talking about it all were about like all pretty much the same guys like the same kind of guys they're talking about the same thing mm-hmm. just like super toxic just like these fucking toxic men like just toxic men talking about like what i was wearing attention seeking all this kind of stuff and and the the thing about all my videos was like i was i was always offering a hand i was always like yo if you want to talk talk to me reach out to me none of them did no one ever did like if you want to talk about your problems like if you if you're upset that you can talk to me i'll listen to what you have to say Mm -hmm. but then eventually like I guess it was kind of a good thing, but eventually the toxic comments stopped coming. People mm-hmm. stopped being aggressive. Like people, like there's just, people were just not, people were just not saying like, just talking shit. Like not really. Some of them were like just dumb offhanded yeah. comments, but I was like, I'm not going to make a full video out of that. The one, the one thing, the one big project that I'm trying, that I need to work on is the, is the one where the guy said that women need to be put in their place. And that was, that's, that's something that I was thinking about uh, that I would do when I would like start my own podcast or Mm -hmm. make it a series or something. 
That's a big one. That's a big topic. It's a huge topic when it came to that. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of emails and responses from that. A lot of girls, like a lot of women talking about their experiences with those toxically insecure men. And it was like, I feel a responsibility to do a good job and I need to sit and do a good job about that yeah. project in itself. It's a lot but of pressure. Eventually, yeah, like eventually like the tox like the, the comments stopped coming and everything got super overtly positive. And I think there was one there was one video in particular that I made simply for a different reason. Like I wasn't responding to anybody in particular. I was just talking about mental health. It was for mental health awareness month in may and i had been i felt that if i stayed in that niche of talking back to people clapping back to people that that's like i myself am becoming part of the problem where it's like i'm like yeah i'm drawing awareness to it and i'm talking back to these guys mm -hmm. but that'll get old really fast yeah and it's like all i'm doing is just talking shit back like mm -hmm. that doesn't really serve a purpose because that's just like that's just, we're just punching across we're just punching across and nothing's really coming out of it because they're not going to learn like they're not going to learn anything they're not going to change who they are and yeah at least, the, at least the positive thing that comes out of it is the fact that some people can look up to me and and, and be like okay at least the, there's somebody who's using a platform to bring awareness to it but I, there's other there's other things that I can bring awareness to in the same vein. And that was when I started talking about the mental health stuff and yeah, it, it went from there where I was like, okay, I finally was able to break out of that niche. And then people responded really well to that. And I was like, okay, maybe people want to talk or hear more about mental health and mental health awareness, especially from a man's perspective that isn't toxic. Mm -hmm. That isn't just sitting there going, that isn't sitting there making people feel chastised. It's leveling with people and like, this is my experience and I'm trying to tell more of the truth. And like, look, it's not easy out there. It's hard. Mm -hmm. Like it's hard. It's not, it's not going to be easy. Life is not easy, but it's, it's, I've had a lot of people reach out to me and tell me that what I do is, impacted their life or changed their life and saved them and mm -hmm. now it feels like <clears throat> it feels like a responsibility almost where it's like when I was a kid growing up I always wanted to be a creator I wanted to be a writer or a storyteller an artist mm -hmm. writing and reading were like my real big things that I wanted to do um, was writing uh storytelling when i was like I, I used to write books i used to write like little comic books and uh, hand them out at school <clears throat> um and then towards my teenage years i got to the film i got to the the art of uh just me just media and film in general mm -hmm. where i got my first camera and i was with the intention to make like a youtube page and i started doing that with started doing that during and uh i just like sat and taught myself how to edit videos yeah. i'm exponentially better now because that's what i do now professionally as a job but mm -hmm. i started with the intent to like tell stories and do that kind of stuff and the one thing that my dad always did and exposed me to was like motivational speakers like Tony Robbins and those kind of guys. Yeah. So in the same vein, I like as being a writer, I always wanted to do that. And I always figured that as sports started coming into the fold, I was like, I always thought that I can use my experience as being a sports star to be able to to talk to people and talk to people about my, about like about my experience. Cause even when I was like playing baseball, I had dreams of being the best and mm -hmm. this, that's that's how, that has always been kind of ingrained just being the best at whatever it is that i was doing yeah and i always thought that i'd have to wait till weightlifting was over to be able to talk to people and tell them and like 
give them my message and like talk to people and try to motivate them and do whatever it is. Yeah. It came around it's, and it just happened. It just came about mm-hmm. in such a roundabout, just funny kind of way that mm-hmm. that content that I make is exactly what I have kind of always a culmination of all I've always wanted to do where to talk about sports i talk about motivation i talk about mental health i just talk to people and make them feel seen and better and it's just it's crazy it's it's honestly like the craziest thing because i like i never thought that i would be able to do such a thing so early i thought there was Mm -hmm. still so much more that i had to do and i think there's something admirable i'm sorry say it again I think there's something admirable in just putting out content of any sort. And when I, yeah. I remember wanting the same thing of like to be a creator of something. Um, when I first got a GoPro back in like 2012, it's like, oh, I want to make these action videos. But I also like, because that's just what a GoPro kind of inspires you to do. But um, I've always wanted to put out something, you know, and now yeah. I kind of have this platform for a podcast to put out something. And I'm like, as long as a few people listen to it or watch it, that's, that's awesome. Cause I'm, you know, you talk about how like, you shouldn't like check your numbers or you shouldn't look at your stuff like that. But I was like, Oh, that's exactly what I want. Though. Like, I want people to see it. I want people to be entertained or to have something to go to, uh, to, break the monotony of a long run um and like that's my goal so like i'm always looking at numbers i always want to see oh i might get a few more people out there to listen to it because i I think it's so fascinating to be able to provide something for somebody and having your youtube page um i would assume kind of feeds into that a little bit for yourself yeah 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 i i think before it was <clears throat> before it was just i would like really like during during covid it was just because i was bored mm-hmm. i wanted to learn like it's just like learn a, a new skill yeah which has now turned into like a actually like an actual job which is the craziest thing i that's that's another crazy thing that i never thought would happen but <clears throat> i i when I started editing and started like learning how to tell a story through that kind of stuff and make stuff that was entertaining, Mm -hmm. it was like, Oh man, this is like, this is just a different version of storytelling. This is a different version of it. And a lot of it was just really comedic and like, just really funny because I was just learning, just trying to put stuff together. But yeah, it's it's just like before I just wanted to, yeah, essentially just break it up. Like, everyone was weightlifting at home this was mainly content for weightlifters it was just mm-hmm. everyone was weightlifting at home everyone was at home everyone was stuck everyone was just bored w- wondering if they were gonna die or not and it was like like here like here's something like just here's something to watch and yeah. and that was that was a real fun time because like in that short span of time <clears throat> in that short span of time i did like i i got a few hundred followers and like a few hundred subscribers and it was just like a really cool experience where i was like oh look i'm i'm making something like mm-hmm. i'm making something that previously did not exist before i touched it i was actually i was talking to i was talking to my to one of my coworkers the other day about that specifically where what i do now like i work i work a essentially a social media manager content creator for the gym that I work at for SoCal okay. for Onyx weightlifting. Okay. I am a assistant video producer for virus and I do some freelance work for a uh, weightlifting house and that kind of stuff too. So I saw your video with, um, Oh, Goodmanson. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was yeah. a cool video. That one, that one was cool. Like that one was probably the best video that I've made so far, which was really cool. Um, so I was, Did you do the I videography was, and like the filming? No, no, no. So that was okay. that someone sent that footage to us and okay. I just put it together. Yeah, gotcha. I put it together. Yeah. But I had to sit through all of like, there was like an, an hour long amount of film that I had to look through and, and mm-hmm. put that together. But I was talking to my buddy where it was like, 
<laughs> I think this job, like being able to sit and create something, essentially at the end of every shift, like I'm typically making like one video a day. Mm -hmm. Um, but being able to create something at the end of every shift that previously wasn't in existence before I got my hands on that is something that's mm -hmm. super, super wild to me. Where yeah. before, you know, like before I used to use, I used to work retail before. We were, that's what we were talking about. Where you know before. Like I can go back to that retail job now, like if I wanted, to, like if I could, like if I'm sure they would hire me. But it's like if I wanted to, if I if I was in a position to ever go back to that same job, I could do it because I didn't. I like just it would take me like a couple of days to get into the swing of things, but I wouldn't yeah. forget it. Um, <clears throat> but because it's so easy and because it's so simple, like all I would mm -hmm. be doing would be helping other people. I, I worked in formal wear. So I would sell my big ass was just wearing like a button up suit and tie. Like a yeah, like it was ridiculous. But I would like help other people essentially get dressed and pick styles out for an event that they had for mm -hmm. a tuxedo or a suit, or the big ones would be like their event or their wedding. Right. Yeah. So I had a hand. I like you have a hand in in making their special day kind of special which is like cool uh, it's yeah. all right it's cool but like going like if i were to go back to that job like yeah it's super easy super simple because mm -hmm. what i've done now is a lot harder but the problem is, is the problem that i was that i told them was like if you were to just go back to that job and do that for eight hours a day eventually like a, like all you're doing like doesn't really feel meaningful mm -hmm. and then you're just spending eight hours like where you can be doing something else and i know that's not like and i'm very very fortunate to be put in the position that i have been and like i've created this like created this kind of just this kind of support system around me that allows me to do everything that i want to do and that's not the same mm -hmm. for everybody but i do really want people to understand that it is possible it is very possible when it comes to <laughs> doing something and learning a new skill that could change the course of everything that you know mm -hmm. it's 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 insane it's like it is, it is really it is really crazy where like i said i started i start like i got i got my camera back in like 20 and like 20 said like 2017 2018 okay and i was original like i did social i did like a social media for the one like the team that i was on before mm -hmm. like they hired me out to do that stuff for them and it didn't really work out because one i didn't know what i was doing and two i was like i was just like i, just, I don't i don't it just didn't work out yeah so and i i put the camera away and then didn't pick it up till 2020 and then in 2020, that's when I sat and like hammered down that new skill. And then from there, that's where it turned into, that's where it turned into where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's just, you don't have to learn a new skill. Like you don't have to learn a new skill for the sole purpose of it being what you want to do. Yeah. If you're just learning, if you're just learning, because you never know when that opportunity is going to arise. Yeah. I think it's so important to always be learning and Anybody who's listened to this before uh, will understand that. But can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I got All a right, call. Can you can you can you put your microphone volume up a little bit? How about now? That's better. Perfect. I got a call, and so it messed it up a little. Bit. Gotcha. My bad. Um, but what were we talking about? Just completely got thrown off there, my bad. Um Talk about but I, skill. Yeah. And I we write content for LinkedIn um uh, at my workplace. And uh, I work for like a shipping company. Yeah. And so um I don't know much about that's unique about the shipping world. So I try to put out stuff about like my formal education that I've learned that I think could help people. And I come from the education world. And I'm always talking about 
being a learner and learning new skills, how you can help your team learn. I think it's so important to always be doing something like that. Um, whether it's just for, for fun or that might challenge you a little bit to yeah. always be learning. Yeah. I, I think that it just kind of goes back to like what we talked about in the very beginning. It's like, why, mm-hmm. why, like, why, how did weightlifting save my life? Like, how did it do that? And there was mm-hmm. in the very beginning, it was a new challenge. It was a new challenge. It's something that was, that I was interested enough to just like, allow it to challenge me mm-hmm. because everything else everything i mean my life up to that point it's like even now it's still very challenging it's like mm-hmm. just dealing with the stuff that i've had to deal with and yeah that it's not easy but at least at least with circumstantially there's nothing i can do about those mm-hmm. challenges that's just shit i had to go through and they did my best to survive yeah the difference is is that with stuff that you choose to challenge you Mm -hmm. is at least that's your decision it's your decision to your decision to attack it your decision to make it as hard or as difficult as you want to you're just your decision to learn like that's i think that's the, the better part where it's it's not happening at you anymore you know life is mm-hmm. like that, that challenge isn't happening at you it's not challenging you due to circumstances it's, it's challenging you because you want it to challenge you and i think that's a huge difference mm-hmm. most people are most people are more adept to just having shit get thrown at them that they have to somehow manage than than actively pursuing something that they want and i think that's yeah. just the way that life tends to work out where it's it's hard like it like it's it's definitely hard when you think about the way life is structured where you know you don't have time for anything nobody has mm-hmm. time for anything and all you're doing is just working you're going to school or surviving and how are you supposed to how are you supposed to enjoy something or even challenge yourself when you're exhausted yeah i think it's, that's that's a huge problem that's mm-hmm. why that's why a lot of like a, a, that's why the message that I try to convey in, in all of my videos is the fact that I know that it's difficult. Like I know that life is difficult. <laughs> and I'm speaking from ex- I'm speaking from my own personal experience mm-hmm. and what I've experienced, but I know that other people have experienced things that are worse than me. Other people have experienced things that are not as bad as me. And It's, it's we're all we're all sitting here just trying to just trying to figure it out mm-hmm. but I, I i just i don't the thing that i don't want to do is discount anyone's experience like their own personal experience like i don't want someone to sit there and go the, the last i know it's going to happen inevitably mm-hmm. but i know that i don't want someone i don't want to i don't want someone to listen to what i have to say and go well that's easy for you to say or someone to be like, you don't like, you don't understand. Like you don't, you don't get like, no, I get it. I understand that it sucks. I understand that life is pretty terrible sometimes, most times, but I can only speak from my experience on what's worked for myself. And if, mm-hmm. if that in, you know, if anything that I have to, like, if I have to say, if anything that I ha- have done can motivate someone or inspire someone to do that, on their own and have it work out for them like that's that's a win that's that's what yeah. i would like mm-hmm. yeah i don't I think it's yeah I it's don't. pretty admirable to help somebody in some way no matter what it is yeah but um we're at two hours here i did not expect that it would go fly by that fast <laughs> but um i don't want to keep you from your whole day but um i would love for you to kind of share where people can find you your social media um all of well, that stuff yeah yeah um so my 
it's pretty simple. I've tried to, I've tried to keep everything. I've tried to keep everything the same. Uh-huh. Uh, my Instagram, my Instagram is W L C Z A R. Uh, my TikTok is the same thing. I have a Twitter, but I'm not really active on it. Mm-hmm. Um, the YouTube is different. Like YouTube, you just have to search me up by name. You can just look up Caesar Flores weightlifting. Uh, mm-hmm. that'll usually, that'll usually pop it up. Um, yeah. Uh, my, uh, I'm, I personally, like I used to, have, I used to have a podcast back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, I think some of the episodes might still be up. It was called a thousand ways to say the same thing podcast. Uh, but I, I guess you could say I'm rebranding it to, to the trash alley show. So be on the lookout for that. Okay. That should be coming up. And, I'll uh, share everything on the pages here. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. And whatnot. But, um, I'll send you all this stuff as well. Yeah, but that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I'm I'm just pretty simple. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you if you want to if you want to support me, you want to help me out. You want to do whatever it is that you think I am worthy of. Uh, I I do definitely like I I have a uh, have a couple sponsors that you know, you guys can support me through like mm-hmm. virus. <clears throat> all my most, I, all the codes are the same. W L C Z A R. You get 10% off stuff for like virus and onyx weightlifting, uh, okay. earth fed muscle, caffeine and kilos, RP. And, uh, my, there, like my, uh, my, my late wait, did I say that virus onyx? Earth and muscle, caffeine and kilos, RP. And then my very last one is kind of fit, kind of fat, kind of fit, kind of fat there. There. Uh I just did a photo shoot with them. It's the first time being a model. How was that? The first time being a first, first time being a model ever. So that was I was pretty nervous for that one. Oh <laughs> man, I'm nervous now. I hope uh did I I hope I didn't miss any. I well, you always message me anything if you if you want me to put it in. I always I always worry about that. I always worry about if uh if I miss any virus, caffeine kilos, onyx, earth fed, RP, kind of fit, kind of fat. No, that's it. Cool. I saw your uh I think I don't know if it was a story or whatnot. I think it was yesterday. You had your kind of fit, kind of fat shirt on yeah. that said back slap me harder, daddy. Yeah, yeah. That's a great shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was that was cool. So yeah, if you guys want to support me, if you guys want to just see what I do, see what I smash in the trash alley, because that's that's a big part of it. I do destroy <laughs> things with a crowbar. Um, just just be sure to like, just share those videos, share those videos with people that you think need some help, need some stuff. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's really it. Just take a look and feel free to reach out to me. I I definitely respond to almost every message if i'm not absolutely swamped well i appreciate you responding to mine and coming I on the show here. you man thank you for <laughs> thank you for having me on absolutely i would love to uh, maybe have you on again in the future let me yeah. see how the recovery's going and how all the video stuff keeps going yeah man absolutely that'd be great and i'll have you on mine too there we go i'm, I'm i fit the trash model pretty good so <laughs> all right i appreciate you thanks for all coming right. on all right Ty, have thank a good you. one bye-bye Bye-bye. Once again, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Uh, a great episode of the What's Your Why podcast and a really good one to go along with the athleticism series. You know, a lot of what we talk about is pushing through and really just hammering and training and putting all the work in. But what Caesar showed us is that sometimes you need to dial it back in order to grow in your sport and to be able to come back as a, a smart and successful athlete. Uh, really appreciate him coming on the show and sharing his story. Definitely check out his YouTube, his TikTok, Instagram. All of this stuff is linked in uh, the description of the podcast here below. Appreciate you guys and come back for more next week. Thank you.